Are you struggling to get a good flow in your consultation? Maybe you're asking questions out of context, or maybe you're sounding formulaic in the way you're asking questions. This is a common problem that IMG have for the RCA. Not too long ago, I had a chat with an IMG registrar who had a similar problem. In this short video, Dr. Wajid tells us what he did to overcome this problem that he encountered with the RCA and how he managed to ask questions in context. You know, rather than asking alcohol, so I may made why I'm asking this, you know, in uh, depression and alcohol, you know, so made it relevant to that case that, you know, yes, people do uh, turn to alcohol uh, as a, a coping strategy. And so I just, do, do you drink it all? So in that way, like smoking in the same way. Uh, if somebody's having a chest pain, and so smoking can increase the risk of, you know, uh, MI, sorry, heart attack. So um, do, you, do you drink, sorry, do you smoke? So, so may, may made it relevant why are you asking anything? Like, you know, elderly person asking, you know, do you live by yourself? No, I was asking, you know, do you have any help at home with you? You know, so the, the, those sort of thing or in a depression, do you have any friends or do you have any family to share your, your, your thoughts with, you know? So made it relevant to the patient uh, uh, asking the question. Rob. That's great. Yeah, I think it's very useful when um, you actually relate the question to the presenting complaint so that you ask a question in context. So the patient has an idea why you're asking this question because yeah. sometimes, um, especially with IMG, they think that they need to ask X, Y question, but the way they phrase it can come a little bit odd at times. That started to give me a flow as well, you know, all these questions rather than, you know, me asking the question and, you know, the patient answering and the patient had no idea what, whether these are relevant or not relevant at all, you know, uh, and, uh, and that developed a good rapport as well. So if you're jumping from one thing from one topic to another topic, you know, just try to correlate those two. I mean, uh, again, uh, make it a, a more like a flow. Um, if the patient started something, just go into that flow. Like, you know, if the patient, oh, I'm more, in the beginning, you said, well, I'm in chest pain and I'm thinking it is coming from the heart. And you, so the, the patient has given you impression already, you know, and maybe some, some and you, you, you can just go into that detail rather than, you know, doing your way, asking the question, you breathe, do you be uh, short of breath with it or, you know, all those questions and then you can give what do you think it what it is causing. So just go straight into that. Okay. So uh, you think it could be the heart attack and, you know, just, just expand on that. And then, yeah, don't ask like, you know, what you thought, uh, you know, the cause for your symptom is. So, and that is giving you more flow and more natural and more like, you know, not formulaic. Uh. That's a great point, yeah. Picking up on these cues that patient actually drop and then following up on that cue and then this will give you a better flow when you're asking follow-up question and you have a natural conversation that goes back and forth with your patient rather than going from one topic to another and going through a list of questions in your head. Is there any things that you would say um, as an IMG you would recommend all the IMG to do, Wajid? Yes, um, I would, uh, I mean, one-to-one, -one, you know, uh, when, when I heard that, you know, that really helped me as well. And, you know, I had a um, the same discussion with, with my trainer as well, you know, just to, I mean, obviously English is not our first language, you know, and we sometimes um, more like, you know, the doctor, centered sort of approach usually. If you're serious about passing the RCA and you don't want to take risk and you want to go with somebody who's already done it and help other people, then book a call with me to see whether I can help you. If I can help you, then we can book you on the one-to-one -one coaching program. If I can't, at least you'll get some clarity in your preparation. General practice is more like about the patient. So let the patient talk, let the patient lead the consultation. So uh, I would say that rather than, you know, just telling the patient what to do. Um, and yes, uh, there, are, there are a few things we do, um, you know, which is quite common with, with, with IMG. Um, so if somebody listened to you, your consultation, um, your trainer, so that they, 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 
they, they can advise, you know, just tell them what should I do in the interpersonal skill? How can I improve that? So sometimes, I mean, it's personal thing, but yes, uh, that did, that really help if somebody give you an honest opinion about, you know, uh, the words you're using sometime, not using the same words again, if you have a vocabulary problem or um, use it in a way that, you know, it looks more uh, natural. That's great. Yeah. The phrasing of questions and how this comes across to the person who's listening. If you found this video useful and you want to watch the whole interview, then click here to watch it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.